Over a span of about four years, I went through a very deep era of self-experimentation. I tried many different diets, supplements, biohacks, and regimens. Almost every powder, tablet, capsule, tincture, extract you could think of, one meal a day, intermittent fasting, carb cycling, keto diet, bulletproof diet, paleo diet, vegan diet, vegetarian diet, water fasts, dry fasts, vibration plates, different types of workouts, breath work, meditations, even as far as sending microcurrents of electricity to my arteries, to my blood on a daily basis to clean my blood. I actually still have that tool in my closet. And that whole journey started on the basis of me wanting to just feel better day to day and lose a little bit of weight. Documenting my journey of trying to reach optimal health. And through that process, I documented everything I tried and everything I learned here on YouTube in hopes that someone else could learn something through my trials and tribulations. Ultimately, I also wanted to find what works best for me. So I tried everything I could think of. And after a few years of doing that religiously, I started to realize a few things. Some things came to light and it turned me off from the whole health and wellness space. I stopped making videos on this channel. I unfollowed all the health and wellness gurus that I was deeply and religiously following for many years. And there are a few reasons why. Number one, I basically found what works best for me. And I'm going to share those things with you in this video. Not one protocol, not one regimen, not one diet had all the answers, but it's pieces of them collectively that put the puzzle together for me. And I'm going to share that here. And number seven, the last one is the most important one. And it is a point I really want to drive home. So stick around, grab a drink, a cup of coffee or something and spend the next 10 to 15 minutes with me. But also another reason why I stopped posting, why I got out of the health and wellness space is I ultimately came to realize that the science moves very, very slow. Like it takes a lot of time to put humans through trials, to do tests, to do studies, to collect the funding for them, to put out the results. That takes so much time. And there are a lot of health and wellness gurus out there. I considered myself one of them at some point on a small scale. And what they, we, I at the time always thought that I had to do was present some sort of wow factor. I'm talking about the Dave Asprey's, the Ben Greenfield's, the Huberman's of the world that always have to have some crazy study that makes you want to change some aspect of your life or make you feel like you have to do something or buy some certain supplement. And you can't have that all the time. You can't have a wow factor, some groundbreaking new study every other week or even every few months in the health and wellness space. It doesn't work like that. It's like they have to try and sell you something because it's how they make their money. And I fell victim to that. And that's why I put a few videos on my channel on private because I felt like I was being too salesy, pushing something I didn't believe in, just was speaking in a certain way to market a certain idea to get people to want to do something. And it just wasn't sitting right with me after a while. And I didn't realize I was doing that in those moments until I kind of stopped, took a step back and realized all that. So the health and wellness space really turned me off from that whole aspect. The reality is, is that the basics to living a healthy life are really, really boring. We already know the answers. Eat well, get some exercise, go outside, have good relationships. Like it's the fucking basics. And the reason I want to talk about that is I feel like I owe an answer to some of my subscribers on YouTube that were following me for my health videos. Those are the reasons why I stopped. I found what worked for me. I needed to take a step back and I was pretty disgusted with the health and wellness industry. But I don't know, maybe there's a way to make the basics fun again, or at least convey them in an interesting way to get people to want to live a healthier life. And, uh, who knows, maybe that'll happen here at some point. Anyways, seven health hacks that have actually improved my life. Health hack number one, controlling my light exposure. That essentially means two things, getting bright light in the morning and using dim or ambient light in the evening. When I wake up every morning, I go outside and I stand as naked as I can without embarrassing myself in front of my neighbors and stand in the sun for a good 30 minutes. 30 minutes isn't a magical number, that's just what I like. It makes me feel great, I get a nice tan on my body. But if it's too cold outside, what I'll do is I'll just sit in my room, open up the window all the way, so that the sunlight is directly hitting my eyes and some of my skin and I'll sit on my couch in front of the window and just sit there for five minutes if I can. Getting sunlight in the morning has been critical for me living my best life. And that sounds really kind of cheesy, I know, but we all know the importance of sunlight, vitamin D, etc. But the reason I like it is because how it helps set your circadian rhythm. One part of regulating your circadian rhythm means that your body's going to produce cortisol in the morning so that you can start your day. But also when you get sunlight in the morning, it is telling your brain, hey, in about nine to 13 hours, start producing melatonin so that we can go to bed at night. Over the last five or six years, whenever I go through phases of having really crappy sleep, I'm having trouble going to bed, tossing and turning, not waking up easily, feeling very groggy in the morning. Whenever I return to getting sunlight in the morning, it's like a complete reset on my sleep schedule. It's amazing. Now, the second point in this one is making sure you're using dim or ambient lights in the evening. How I just said, bright light during the day signals to our brain that it's daytime, that it's time to be awake and be alert and get things done and produce cortisol. Does it make sense to still have bright lights shining in your face and all around you in the evening time when you're supposed to be relaxing, producing melatonin? No, it does not. I also use blue blockers. Some people think they work. Some people think they don't. Some people think it's a placebo 
whatever. For me, I stare at a computer all day for work. Blue blockers in the evening really help with eye strain and sort of headaches that I get sometimes from staring at screens so much. Okay, I gotta wrap this up. The first one, controlling your light exposure. You can control it and it will change your life. I promise you, if you do it consistently, it is kick-ass. Health hack number two, eating a high protein diet. I went through so many diets from very low protein, moderate protein, high protein, plant-based protein, animal-based protein, and the mother effing sweet spot is adequate protein, high protein, and most of it, if not all of it, coming from animal sources. Many people will be surprised to find out that a high protein diet is so so healthy for most individuals, very, very good for you in many aspects, not just working out, trying to build muscle, but I'm talking it affects your mood as well. If your diet lacks in essential amino acids and even non-essential amino acids like found in collagen and you start eating them in adequate amounts on a consistent basis, you will feel your mood change because certain amino acids in adequate amounts help balance your hormones. It can help neurotransmitters function properly, synthesize hormones like dopamine and serotonin. And the reason I say from animal-based sources is because they are a superior superior source of protein and, and amino acids, period compared to plant-based proteins. That's just a fact. There is a scale to determine the quality of certain proteins in animal-based sources are higher. They are superior. People who lack key amino acids found in protein start to experience things like depression, anxiety, weakness, moodiness, basically the character traits of a vegan person. Look, I don't mean to throw shade and offend anyone. I was vegan once for a period of time. I'm just stating the facts here. You will literally see changes in your body, in your mood, how you show up in this world when you start eating more high quality sources of protein. I promise you, I promise you, I promise you. Health hack number three. This is something that I already know I'm preaching to the choir about, but it is eating mostly whole foods from home cooked meals 90% of the time, 85% of the time. You know exactly what's going into your meals. You can control it. You can control the protein, the carbs, the fats if you want. Eating from home 90% of the time, absolutely key. Health hack number four, actually, actually working out consistently. I have had many, many flaws in my workouts. I have had many, many inconsistencies in my workouts over the years. I would say barely in the last six months, I've actually started working out or moving my body, I should say, on a consistent basis to the point where it's a habit now. And it just makes you feel so confident. I'm not even speaking on the physical benefits of working out, like gaining muscle. I'm really not trying to get jacked and be a bodybuilder and anything like that. I'm very comfortable with my body now as a former fat kid and also as a former skinny fat guy, maybe about four or five years ago, I was skin and bone at one point. I just feel very comfortable in my skin now. I'm happy with the weights that I'm moving. It makes me feel feel really good and that's the main point I want to sell you on with working out on a regular basis and moving your body is no one likes it. So when you do it, we don't want to do it, but you do it anyway, it builds confidence in you. That is one of the number one ways to build confidence, to improve your self-esteem, which improves your mood and the way you carry yourself throughout the day. Doing it on a regular basis just boosts your brain to an insane amount. It makes you confident. It puts a pep in your step and it builds discipline. Working out is hard, especially training legs. Like doing upper body stuff is easy because you get a nice pump. You look good in the mirror. You get the right lighting. Oh yeah, I'm looking good. But doing legs, I fucking hate training my legs. I hate it. I despise it. I don't look forward to it at all, ever, any day, but I do it anyway. That's building discipline. That's going to carry over to other areas of your life. I promise you, please fucking start doing it if you haven't done it already. Health hack number five. I hope you got the gist that these aren't health hacks. There's no hacking your health. There's no biohack. This is just all fucking buzzwords to sell you on stuff. But number five, going from working out, being sweaty, high endurance, high energy, we're going to flip the switch and we're going to go to hugs and cuddles, baby, and showing affection and receiving affection. Because number five is hacking your oxytocin. Oxytocin is known as the love drug or the love hormone. Literally, that warm, fuzzy feeling you get when you hug someone you love, when you are playing with your kid and they tell you that they love you and you tell them that you love them. To put it simply, oxytocin is anti-stress. It's the opposite of fight or flight. It's rest and digest. It's being loved and feeling loved. And in the modern world where we are constantly bombarded with information, technologies, problems going on, stress of day-to-day -day life, it's really nice to know how to hack your oxytocin. And there are ways you can do that. And I am so fascinated with oxytocin, I'm surprised 
surprised I'd never made a video about it. I got to the point where I bought oxytocin nasal spray. You shoot it right up your nostril and you let it sit in there for a while and it's supposed to give the effects of oxytocin. I didn't find too much success with it. That was one thing that I never reported on on, on, on YouTube. But what I do like to do is simply cuddle with my girlfriend. I make it a thing. Let's go cuddle, have sex, have an orgasm, give someone else an orgasm, hold hands, physical touch, those sort of things. You can promote oxytocin by simply making eye contact with people, laughing, giving and receiving gifts, giving and receiving gifts so you can give someone something. Or if you hate people and you have a bunch of cats or a dog or animals, petting uh, your dog or your cat can also stimulate and release oxytocin, which is very interesting. That really has improved my life. Health hack number six, having my own way to creatively express myself. In other words, having a hobby. I feel like in today's culture, at least in my age group, it almost makes it seem like if you're not doing something productive or doing something to monetize it or to get to a certain goal that it's completely pointless and worthless. Wrong. We need hobbies. We forget to take time out to just do something, something that has no meaning to it. Not everything has to be part of your grand master plan. Just fucking do something that just makes you feel good or it's even okay if it makes you feel nothing because it's okay to feel nothing. It's okay to slow down a bit. Express and create. Draw and build. Shoot and edit. Record and play. Just do something that has no meaning to it that just makes you feel good. Find some way to express yourself. Trust me, that stuff helps your inner psyche for sure. Health hack number seven. Now, some of you are probably surprised I have yet to talk about supplements, but ding dong, someone's at the door. Who is it? Supplements. Now, like I said, I've tried almost every powder, tincture, tablet, capsule, et cetera, et cetera, injection that you could think of over the years with different supplements. Only a few have stuck with me. Number one, Sheila G. Matter of fact, I haven't taken mine today yet, so give me a second. I've talked extensively about Shilajit on YouTube and on TikTok, actually. It's essentially a black tar resin, not heroin. It's essentially compressed organic plant matter that is full of antioxidants, minerals, vitamins, trace elements that the body needs that we don't get in our modern diet. And in Shilajit is something called fulvic acid. And fulvic acid helps get the antioxidants, the vitamins, the enzymes, everything that's found in there directly into the cell where it needs to go. It balances the body and nourishes the body. It is one of the most powerful supplements that I have ever tried. And I'm not just speaking for myself. Out of the thousands of comments that I've gotten on YouTube over the years, a lot of them are about two things. Number one, medicinal mushrooms, but even more so, Shilajit and how it's helped them. I've gotten the most positive feedback out of anything from Shilajit. The second supplement, creatine. I have a whole video on that. It's not just for muscle gains. It's good for the brain as well. It's good for your body. It's good for cognition. It's a very powerful supplement, creatine, and it's very cheap. Third one, medicinal mushroom supplements like lion's mane, cordyceps, and reishi. I don't take those regularly. I just take those every once in a while, but when I take them, I love how it makes me feel. It depends on what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to relax on a certain night. I'll take a reishi. I got a really big, intense day mentally. I'll take lion's mane. If I have a really intense workout, aside from my regular pre-workout, I'll take a cordyceps. Fourth supplement that I take on a regular basis is L-theanine. I actually got it sitting right over there. I'm too lazy to go get it. I take L-theanine every morning with my coffee. Caffeine and L-theanine work very well together to give you a nice brain boost. If you get caffeine jitters from coffee, it makes you all jittery. L-theanine can actually mitigate that. It's a nice supplement and it's relatively cheap. Another supplement or stimulant that I use and abuse is nicotine. If I'm ever feeling a little dip in the afternoon or need a little pick me up, I don't go for the caffeine because if I have it too late in the day, it'll keep me awake. I go for the nicotine. Four milligrams, chew that bitch up, stick it right in the top left gum right there for a few minutes. Nicotine buzz going, baby. Nicotine's actually very powerful for the brain. It's actually very beneficial. I'm surprised I haven't made a video on nicotine because pure nicotine can actually be a great tool, especially if you're doing some hardcore cog cognitive work during the day, you know what I mean? I'm sitting at my desk editing videos for clients on a daily basis. You need that extra boost sometimes. And nicotine has been very powerful for that. Wait a minute, I think I screwed up the... <laughs> the numbers on my list. I actually have eight health hacks. That was number seven. The last and final one, the one that I really want to hit home. The number one health hack that has dramatically improved my life, that has freed up a big part of my mental, of my psyche. The one that if you didn't listen to anything I said in this video, I want you to hear this. And that is to not give a rat's ass about health hacks, to not be so uptight about your health. That 
may sound wrong to certain people. We want to keep our health in check, but don't be so obsessive over it. Don't be a hypochondriac, which is what I was. If you're living in a state of constantly worrying about every single toxin that is possibly out there in the world, in the water, in your non-grass fed meats, what's the best form of X supplement? Does it matter if it's in a capsule or in a tablet? Stressing about what oil the restaurant cooked your food in is going to do more harm than good. Like sometimes those things matter, but seriously, they really don't. And I'm speaking to the old version of myself on this one, because when I was deep into keto and bulletproof, I worried about every single possible toxin. I was obsessing over all the small details. And I'm here to tell you to please not do that. Just get the main things down. Just get the basics down. Like I said in the beginning of the video, like all these health hacks have been, they're not fucking hacks. They're the basics. You need to just get the basics down and not worry and live your life. It's also about being resilient. The body and the mind are meant to be resilient. Being able to prevail and perform under any circumstance, not just when you had the most optimized sleep and the most optimized meal for six days in a row, then you can perform your best. No, learn how to perform your best under any circumstance. A major, major problem with trying to live a healthier life or to optimize your life is that you become very fragile. The slightest disturbance in your routine and your day is ruined and now you can't perform. It's, it's mental. You need to learn how to operate and perform under any goddamn circumstance that comes your way. That, that is optimal performance, baby. Not making sure that every single thing is dialed in perfectly to a T. Do the work, get it 80 to 90% there, and that's it. Live your life, have fun, stop being so scared of things. And like I said, most of you probably don't fall into that category. I wouldn't think so. I'm really just speaking to myself. But if I'm speaking to myself, a, a, a past version of myself, I know there are others out there they could possibly resonate. At the end of my health journey, after like four or five years, when I stopped making videos, I went out, man, I stopped doing every single health thing possible. I stopped taking all my health supplements. I was drinking a lot of alcohol. I was smoking cigarettes. I was going out on as many dates as I could. And you know, just having a lot of fun there, eating fast food whenever I actually wanted it, staying out late, not blocking blue lights, staring at my phone at night, going to bed at 2 a.m., but still waking up at 6 a.m. to pull out a client edit and getting that shit done, getting paid well for it, and then going out and having fun the next day. It was a, it was, it was a great period in my life. I just don't feel like partying going out anymore. I let it out of my system. Now I found a balance, right? And you gotta let those things come to you, man. You gotta let those, you know, it's okay to go through a, through a, through a period of trying to optimize everything, but then it's also very beneficial to go through a period where you're optimizing nothing. You're just kind of going with the flow and doing what feels right for you. I learned so much through the degenerate era of my life and the optimized Mr. Smarty Pants era of my life. Both have served me very, very well. But that was something I really wanted to get off my chest. We're not all perfect. Not everything's gonna be perfect all the time. We all have our guilty pleasures, our bad habits, our little indulgences that we like to have. And you can't be scared to have that for yourself every once in a while. But hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you got some sort of piece of information that is gonna be useful for you in your life out of this. So with that being said, subscribe if you like the vibe and I will see you in my next video.